Uh, hi, thanks. Thanks for uh, having me here. Um, what I was going to show today is a little prototype. Um, I, so a bit about me, I've been working with uh, decentralized technology for maybe three or four years now. And um, I've spent some time working uh, with a lot of the DAT technology. DAT Foundation itself. Um, and I did some experiments with uh, CRDT and collab building collaborative apps uh, maybe about two years ago. And then um, that work um, sort of caught the attention of Protocol Labs. And I ended up going over to the IPFS side of things and working over there and building some collaborative apps over there. And uh, about two years ago, I, um, when, I, when I'd sort of made the switch from DAT over to IPFS, um, I do the DAT source code really well, Hypercore, and um, I was learning IPLD, and I was like, hey, I wonder if I can sort of mix the two together. I did a little experiment, and I never really finished the experiment off. So um, I'm going to show you um, what I was doing and how we could probably take it um, to the next level and how it's possible to merge the two world, worlds together of DAT and Hypercores and IPFS. So I'm going to share my screen. And I don't have a lot of feedback here. Uh, let's see if I can see the chat. Is. OK. Oops. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll read the chat after. So um, to, to, to uh, get started with this, I've created, I'm using this platform called Observable HQ. And I've created um, a few notebooks. Oh, no. And um, so and I broke, I've made four little notebooks so I can uh, walk through this. Um, I better watch the time. So. Um, the first one is Hypercore intro. So Hypercore, I'm sure most people at this conference know what Hypercore is, but Hypercore is the append-only log, which is the, the, the uh, foundation piece of the DAT protocol, which is now just, uh, they've uh, sort of graduated from the DAT foundation and has now been just its own thing called Hypercore protocol. And it's used by Hyper Hypercore protocol project. And if you, you click on this website, it's actually really good. They've got nice little animations and they, they talk about, uh, they show actually what the Merkle trees are. So I'm, I'm not gonna go too much into that because it's already been covered. Um, Beaker Browser, of course, is built on Hypercore. Uh, Hyperdrive, which is a file system. So Hypercore is a pen-only log. Hyperdrive is you can put a bunch of files and directories. Uh, Hypertry is, uh, uh, a key value store. Um, and then there's Hyperdrive Daemon, which uh, they're just uh, calling it, I think, hyperspace or something now. So, and of course, the DAP project. Um, so just go quickly over Hypercore. It's a pen only log. The nice thing about it is you can replicate it very easily. Um, and each Hypercore has a public and secret, a public. And, and the secret key, so you have a key pair. So as an author, you can keep the, the secret key to yourself, and, but you can distribute, distribute your hypercore and everybody knows it came from you. It, nobody can fake it. And there's a really nice link here, how DAT works. Um, and it has lots of nice uh, diagrams of the data structures. So, uh, but I'm just gonna show you. So I'm using this uh, uh, Observable HQ platform and it's it's sort of interesting. Uh, you can import uh, JavaScript libraries right into the web page. Uh, unfortunately, um, the newest newest version of Hypercore is not yet supported in the browser, so I had to use Hypercore version seven. And this is getting into the weeds, but um, I had um, normally you uh, most web pages that use. Hypercore and the DAT libraries, they use Browserify as a bundler. Um, but because I want to use this platform, I couldn't use that. So I um, made uh, 
uh, a build of it um, using um, this uh, bundling system called Snowpack and I made it ES modules out of it so I could import it into this. So this is what you'll be seeing today. But this is the same libraries that you could run in Node or in your browser. So, and so now that all these things are imported, um, I can just create a hypercore feed. And so you, you load in the hypercore library, you add, um, I'm, I, I just want to store my data in the browser because it's easier for demos. Um, and I just go use the in memory one as opposed to something like index.db. So they have an NPM module for that called random access memory. So to create my append only log, uh, I just um, call hypercore, which I've loaded, um, random access memory, RAM, and I put those together and I get a feed. And um, I've got some little code here so I can su subscribe to append events. And uh, here's my um, feed here. So I've got a button for adding a record and I've already added one record here, here, so plum. So I'm just gonna add a random fruit. So if I click on here, it's just an append only log. So no matter how many times I click this, it's just gonna add them at the end. You can't, um, it, it's immutable. You can't delete these things after you've added them. Um, that's the only operation you have. It's really, really simple. And that's the foundation of all the things that in the DAT ecosystem. So uh, that's it for uh, what Hypercore does. It really doesn't do a whole lot. It does a lot under the covers, like the synchronization and that. But um, so I'm going to go on to the next uh, module of this, uh, watching the time. Um, I don't know how to check watch for questions. So um, I'll, I'll pause for questions after this one. Um, so so inside Hypercore, so you've seen the, the, what Hypercore does, the sort of API for it. Um, inside Hypercore, Hypercore is basically a database and there's a bunch of essentially like database tables that are, that are normally stored on disk, but in this case, we're storing them in memory. And in the, in the, um, in the, the DAT paper, they call them sleep files. Um, there's some acronym, it's a little bit silly. Um, and I can't remember what it is. Um, and um, for Hypercore, I just want to show you two of these sleep files. Um, uh, one is called data and one is called tree. So data is the first one and it's just the raw binary data. So when I add a record in, it's just the bytes. And every new record I add onto the log, it just sticks the bytes on the end of the data file. It doesn't stick any extra metadata about the, the record isn't store the length of the number of bytes I stored or anything. So, um, so that's what the data file does. But you do need the metadata. Like you do need to know the length of the number of files you, you stored. So um, that, date, that metadata gets stored into this data structure called tree. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you that. So, um, so here's the, the data. The demo. So if I just add some records, so added banana, added apple. So you, you can see here, uh, this data, this is the actual bytes that would be in the file. So the first record was plums. So the first four bytes of the file are plum, D L U M. And then banana, B A N A N E, apple, A P. So this would be the, your data file would be just these bytes. There would be nothing else on it. And it's really nice because you add stuff on and it's just, the, the file grows, but it only grows at the end. So that's really nice for a lot of reasons. Um, you, you never ever, because you can't delete things, you're never going in, you can't edit things, you can't delete them. Um, but we'll, let's talk about the tree data structure. So that's, that's the, uh, um, where you store the metadata that is missing from the data file. So you can see we added five, five uh, records here. And what it, the tree data structure is called tree because it is a binary tree. And if you look here, um, you can see a little binary tree. So, um, so each of these like zero and two and four and six and eight, those line up with the, the, the data that we, the records that we added into the, the data file. Um, and, but then there's also these like one, three and five, those are um, nodes in the tree and they're, they're called Merkle nodes. 
and they combine hashes together. So I'll, I'll talk about that. So, so as I add records in, so you can't really see them up here, uh, you can see this, this structure grows. You actually like notice it's actually not just one tree, it's actually multiple trees. So the, here's one tree here, there's one tree here. If I click one more time, this is actually another tree. So you, you actually got have three trees here, but they sort of grow in a very sort of regular fashion. So um, I, I'm using a, a library by Mathintosh to generate this uh, called print tree. And um, the this tree, it, like you have, if you have 20 items in the tree, it will always look like this. So, um, so here's it, the same data, but what I've done is I've just added the data on the front, so you can you can see. So as I add items, you can see plum added plum. <laughs> it's always plum for some reason. Okay, there's a lemon, um, and so you can see that the even number in the tree correspond to the data that we're the records that we're storing but the odd numbers are sort of in between here and they 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 correspond to combined bits of data so plum and apple or plum and banana together that's uh tree node number one and then apple lemon together tree node number five whoop oh. What happened there and then uh yeah and then you can just see you combine these things together so right now and i'm not we're not storing any data in the tree so let's let's talk about the, the 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 data that's actually stored in the tree so here's the same exact same thing but here i'm revealing the da the data that's stored in the tree so i mentioned that the um the the data that you store in the data file doesn't have the size but the you can store that in the tree here in the tree data structure so this is size four so there's a number of bytes um so each one of these um so the tree is uh on the disk is just another file but sort of more random access you know you can add in the middle you don't have to add at the end but the every record is the exact same number of bytes and each record has a size and a hash stored into it. So the, the, the size is used for the leaf nodes with the data. So plum has four letters, so it's four. Banana has six letters, so it's six. And then um, the, the Merkle nodes, the, the, the odd number nodes are, you add four and six together, you get 10. So like four and six together, five and five is 10. So one and five, so you get 10 and 10, so you get 20. And so you, so you, can, you can see, you can quickly take this number is 37, and this number is 18, and this number is nine. You uh, add them all together, you have the total size. Sorry, oh. sorry to interrupt, but you stopped sharing. Oh, really? Oh, okay, it's not good. <laughs> Okay, I, I apologize for that. So, um, yeah, the screensaver kicked on for some reason and it kicked me out of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to here. So, um, so here's the um, the tree data structure, um, and this. So I've added my data in, and so here's all the data I've added. I've got. 14 entries, so zero to 13, and you have the data, and here's all the, the bytes for the data, and that's in the data file. Now, the tree file is another file, it's, um, and the, that's separated the metadata out. And uh, so these, these are the leaf notes, so zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10, they're the even numbers. Um, they correspond to the records in the data file. So when you're when you're adding uh, data into your hypercore, it's zero, one, two, three, four. 
um, you multiply it by two and you get the index into the tree node. And then um, the odd numbers are the, um, the Merkle nodes. So these sort of combine, th these build up the tree structure and they're used where we store com data for combined things. So, um, so here's the same view, but I'm, I'm showing the data for the leaf nodes. So, so hypercore record zero is in the tree structure is zero, but hypercore record one is actually, you multiply by two because you have these little um, Merkle nodes that are sort of in between. And you can see um, as I add them, they add at the bottom here and the little tree gets built up. Um, but as I add things, um, it's actually multiple trees. So there's, this is one big tree with all these ones. And then here's a little tree with just two items in it. And um, so up until now, I'm not showing any data being stored in the tree. Like the, the data that you see is actually in that other file. Um, but if you scroll down here, you can see the d actual data that is stored in this tree file that's on disk. And it's basically for each node in the tree, um, sequentially on the disk, they're all fixed size records. And they just have two things in them. They have the size and they have the hash. So, so the size of plum is four letters, size is four letters. Uh, banana is six letters, size is six letters. You can combine them together um, and that's 10 bytes. And then here, four and six, so five bytes, five bytes, 10 bytes. So then you combine these together, you get 20 bytes. And then the hash is just a cryptographic hash of the contents of, so for the leaf node, it's like plum, you hash that. But there's a little prefix on there. I'm not showing it because um, it's, uh, but it's just using a uh, blake 2 b hash because that's really, really quick. And you get these things. And then the Merkle hashes, you, you just combine this hash and this hash. You just take these strings together, you add a little header onto it, and then you treat that as a binary file, you hash it again, you get another hash. So this is what you call, it's called a Merkle tree. And so both, both that and IPFS use this. So uh, go a little bit faster. So, um, so, so that's basically the guts of Hypercore. And that's what that is built on. And this is the foundational bit. So okay, I'm gonna go on to, um, I'm gonna pause for questions. Um, I see the chat here. I don't know, is it possible to see the chat while I'm, oh, there it is. <laughs> ah, it went away. Just uh, click on public chat once and then it should pop up. I think it's just really slow. Okay. Okay, so quite cool, amazing. These nodes multiple to you. Okay, yeah, so. Um, Good. So I'll, I'll just go on because I'm, I'm running low on time because I sort of wasted a bit there. Um, so, okay. So that's the that side of things. Uh, that was like what I was doing two years ago. And then I got Dog Protocol Labs, IPFS, IPLD. IPFS is really cool, actually. Um, so IPFS is nice. They've also got a, a, a JavaScript version of it. There's a Go version that you'd run on your, your Linux server or on your desktop. But there's a version that also runs in the web browser. So I'm loading that one in here. Um, and for this demo, I don't really care about IPFS so much, although it's got a lot of neat things. What I really care about is IPLD. And IPLD is, they got fancy words at, at Protocol Labs, but they call it interplanetary linked data. And it's basically, um, it's, a, it's a, a bunch of Lego blocks for building uh, what they call directed cyclic graphs. It's a graph data structure you can build any type of a tree of things. Um, so Hypercore is really simple. It's only got a binary tree, so it's very, very balanced. Uh, with IPLD, you can um, you can sort of have like binary blobs that have links to other binary blobs, but those those binary blobs can be the nodes in your tree, and these links are you know the the vertices of the tree, I guess. Um, but it's, um, 
because it's limited to uh, directed acyclic graphs, which means uh, you can't have a loop, like you can't have a snake eating its tail. Uh, it just wouldn't, like, how would you be able to uh, hash that? So, um, so okay, so I'm going to show you how this works. So, uh, the IPLD API uh, is really, really simple. So, I just want to store this little JSON object here. Um, ignore these brown brackets, but this is just my simple object. And I start and I got my, this is my simple JavaScript object. And I want to um, make, turn that into IPLD. So uh, you call this, uh, so IPFS has a bunch of stuff built into it. Um, there's like 10 different APIs inside of IPFS. So DAG is one of them. So director to secret graph, and that's basically IPLD. And you just go call put, you know, I put this object into my IPFS node, but it needs to know a little bit more information. It needs to know the format. So I'm going to take this, JavaScript object, I'm going to convert it to a format called CBOR, which is concise binary object representation, which is just basically JSON, but it's, um, you can put like real numbers and stuff into it and it, it, it's parsable, it's got a binary format. Um, so it, it's, it's uh, very, very small, it's very few bytes as well. Um, and it, um, it also, everything you put into IPLD or IPFS, um, every little thing you put in there, every little binary blob gets hashed, it gets an identifier. So it's called content, address, content addressability. And so if you have the hash and the objects in your IPFS node are available on the network, um, you can fetch it. And th those hashes are how you link things together when you're building your digs. So the important thing is you want to get this hash, um, which is, there's a, when you actually store them in there, they call it a content identifier. So uh, it's, it's good to think of it as a hash, but there's actually a little bit more than that. So, but you have to choose a hashing algorithm. So, so in this case, I'm just using the standard one from the, the Hello World, which is SHA-3, 512. But they, they've got, they support like, I don't know, like 20 or 30 different ones with different bit links, all sorts of things. So you can match your hashing algorithm to all sorts of things. The idea is like if things like SHA-1 are insecure now, so you can upgrade uh, your hashing algorithm. Um, that's gonna change all your content identifiers. Um, so, okay, so here's this thing. I've put it in here as one step um, and you get this, uh, they call the content identifier, which is sort of a hash of the data structure that we sh we we shoved into the node. And um, what's really neat is they have this tool called IPLD Explorer. And I hope I'm not running over time. Um, and you can see this is because my web browser here is actually linked to the internet. I can actually go to this website and it actually pulls it straight from my web browser. Um, and you can see here's the thing I put in there. If I changed it, it would update it. And uh, so th this is like really boring. That's like hello world. Um, but you want to build a, a, a tree, like a, a, a directed acyclic graph out of it. And um, I'm going to skip over showing you how IPFS uses it, but they, you, you can put a directory of files into IPFS and you can go view the, view the XKCD cartoon. Uh, comic strip archive on IPFS and see the pic the things. But you can also go into IPLD and you can click down and see how it's broken into a whole bunch of little documents that are linked together. Um, but I'm going to do that with my documents. So I already have this CID, uh, one document in there. I want to create another document that refers to it. So it's nice, you just have to use JavaScript basically, or um, so I just created a JavaScript object. So this is the data I want to store. I want to say, who am I? I'm the parent. It, I could put any data in here. I just put that in there. Uh, um, and then the, the link, so the linking convention is you create an object and the key is a slash. Um, and let me see if I can edit to them. That probably looks better. Um, you just, you just, when, when you send an object that looks like this to, you ingest it into that API, it will turn that into a link in, in 
and that's all this. So, so I take that, I um, store it in the exact same way as before. And then I get a parent CID, and you'll see that the CID is different than this CID. Um, but like this, this link is to that CID. So then if I go look at it in IPLD Explorer, you can see here's the object I created. I put any data in there, and here's my link. And then I can click on the link here and go back to there. So. So that's what we want to do is like we want to build the trees of stuff with uh, binary data all mixed in with it. And uh, I should plug the proto school tutorial. They have a really nice interactive um, um, thing that will step you through how to use this basic API here. Um, okay, so I'm going to the, the last part of my demo. Uh, how am I doing for time? Quite good, uh, Jim. I okay. guess there is for, for questions. This is, this is good. I didn't totally finish off this part of it, so, um, but I, I think I have enough that it, it's sort of cool. So, so I took, so this is sort of combining what I showed you with the, the hypercore with the IPLD and I'm putting it all together. So, so here's hypercore review, previous hypercore example. So I've got one record here. Let's add Okay, so we got our nice little uh, binary balance tree. We got all these sizes, we got all these hashes. Um, that's awesome. So let's take that and stick that in IPLD. So um, actually, yeah, I guess I wanna show this code. So here I create IPFS node. Um, it is actually possible to use IPLD without using IPFS. There's a, the IPLD project is a separate project from IPFS now, and they're making these really small little JavaScript libraries. Uh, so you can use it without all the other stuff in IPFS. I wanted to use those for this demo actually, but I couldn't figure out how to bundle them. <laughs> so, um, so I just went with the IPFS. And, uh, so, um, so I've got, the, the the data here. So I got. I'm only going to do the data leaves for this one. So I got four items here: cantaloupe, rambutan, kiwi fruit, strawberry. And so in this code here, there's because I wanted to do it interactive, I have to do use generators and things. So I'm not going to talk about that. That's sort of complicated. But I can so feed that link. So this is a hyper. I'm talking directly to the hypercore API. A feed is my hypercore instance, and that's storing the data with these four fruits in it. And the length is four in this case. So zero, one, two, three, so that's four. Um, and then I just have a for loop. I iterate over them, uh, have a little helper function. Um, the Hypercore 7 doesn't do promises, so I had to wrap it in promises to make it work with uh, uh, observable. Um, but I'm basically just fetching, like fetch zero is cantaloupe, fetch one is rambutan, fetch, you know, and then, um, so if we're one by one, I'm fetching them. And then uh, to, I want to generate a hash that matches the, so that is generating these, it's using um, Blake 2B hashing algorithm. The neat thing is um, IPFS, also in IPLD also supports the Blake 2B hashing algorithm. So we can actually get hashes that match exactly. So um, so I'm putting in, so I'm passing in options when I input in between these IPLD objects. I'm just saying, just store the raw bytes and flat hash them with the Blake 2B 256 hashing algorithm. And in order to make them match uh, what that is doing exactly, or hypercore, I have to, Hypercore also pads it, so they pad it, they put a, a byte that says zero at the beginning, and then they also add the data length as a uint64 big endian. Um, so it sticks those things in, does, then does the dat, or the, then it sticks the data on the end, is a big buffer, and it just generates the hash of that. And that's what, that's what Hypercore does. So if I want the exact same hashes on uh, IPLD, it's not really a requirement, I wouldn't have to do it, but it's sort of neat that I can do that. 
So um, I matched up the ha hashing algorithms. So it, it kicks out these um, CIDs here. So I got four different CIDs. But there's a one-to-one -one mapping. Like I can take the CID, run it through a function. I should have done it for this demo. And it would match this hash exactly and vice versa. So I could take this hash and convert it to, to this. It's, it's really, really sort of neat. So, so there you, you have this one-to-one -one mapping as long as you hash the exact same content. And um, so, I can so I can take this, I can store this in, and here's where I ran out of time. So um, I wanted to do the same things. I wanted to iterate over the tree nodes. So zero, one, two, three, four, and get the size, um, the size information, um, and um, stick that into like one of those like JSON style things, convert it into CBOR, and then just link to the leaf instead of so I, I wouldn't have to store the hashes of the leaf in there, but then um, I probably would want to calculate a hash. I've actually done this. So I, there's, I did a GitHub prototype two years ago. I was trying to convert this over. And you can see I have similar sort of things here. I'm encoding and I, I make a little tree data, I put the size, and then here, here's where I'm linking to, to my leaf nodes. And then I can write out these these nodes, and then you can. So then I can basically, uh, you know, in that in that GitHub repo, I'm storing these things into IPFS and IPLD. And then the other thing, the last thing you have to do is because you actually have more than one tree. Like these trees aren't linked together, so I'm storing this as IPLD graph and this is IPLD graph. So you have to make another tree that just sort of links three and nine together. And then, and that's what that does in turn, or hypercore does internally as well. And then, uh, what else is missing? Uh, so those are the root nodes. Uh, what hypercore also does is it stores uh, signatures. So you have the, the the public the public private key pair or secret key, and it signs everything. And then there's also bit fields for syncing, and then there's just like keys. So I can use the the, the um, the, I can I can I could essentially build a random access storage adapter that so I could just start hypercore, add this random access storage adapter to it, and somehow wire that up to point to my data sources, which could be IPFS, and um, I could store data in uh, uh, via the date the, the hypercore API, and it would just write it out to IPFS, and I could do the reverse. I could pull from IPFS. They get it into my hypercore just using the hypercore API. So that's really sort of neat. There's a lot of questions there, like how would syncing work? Because you could sync with IPFS, um, or you could sync with the hyper hypercore protocol has a syncing algorithm too. What would happen if you ran both of those at the same time? I think the bit field is there to show you which things you have, but like if you're pulling from IPFS, do you even need the bit field because all the all everything's like fetchable via so there's a lot of there's a lot of sort of like little fit and finish uh issues and uh i'm sort of i sort of excited to sort of pick up on this project and sort of continue it on so i'm going to stop sharing and ask uh maybe we can do questions uh, okay more messages uh, how are we for time? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is some time for questions. Okay, so um, so other neat things we could do is like if you can get so by dropping it into IPFS, you get the data de duplication for free, which is sort of neat. Um, that'd be sort of interesting to see if you really wanted to save storage, like you put the same data multiple times into a hypercore. It's just going to duplicate that data out. Um, I think there are plans in future um, newer versions of Hypercore to actually do some deduplication as well. So I, I'm sort of stuck back in uh, Hypercore 7 era with, with my demo. Um, but I think the, the newer versions of Hypercore are, it's, it's basically the same underlying data structure. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity to play, play with that. Um, I think like hyper, hypercore is like super efficient. Uh, like if you look at the way everything's arranged, 
Um, with IPFS, it's like hashing every little node of the tree and then storing that. So that's going to be slower. Um, so this trade-off, so it'd be really interesting to do a lot of, uh, try to get just the basic things going back and forth and try to do some performance work on that and see what's slower here and there. Um, there's also lots of interesting different approaches to networking on the different projects. And I'd like to sort of cross the streams a little bit and see uh, what would be possible to, uh, Hyperswarm can do some things that the IPFS DHT can't do, um, but libp2p can do all sorts of neat things that, um, you know, the Hyperswarm can't do, so. Um, and, and there's Filecoin, so my day job is I'm working on Filecoin, so uh, for um, saving your data for long-term storage on a permissionless blockchain that you can fund with something like Ethereum smart contracts, that's sort of cool too. So, um, any questions? Paul says data leaves, but where does it go? <laughs> oh, is the demo linkable for posterity? Uh, yes, yeah, so I put it on my observable. Um, sorry, I was just throwing it together uh, right before. So I set it up as a collection. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to um, finish off a little bit more of it so it, it does the full full loop but i just ran out of time this morning <laughs> it's got up really early observable is a real puzzler sometimes trying to get third-party uh npm packages to run in that thing and to make things interactive you have to do a lot of like use generators and things so it's a really fun it's a real fun platform but it's really sort of advanced javascript sometimes Have you considered a custom IPLD codec for representing? I, I think that's a, a good idea. I don't really know enough about how to make a custom IPLD codec. Um, the, the IPLD team is like doing, like the stuff I was showing is like the IPLD from a couple of years ago. And they've got this really, really amazing stuff. Uh, like Michael Rogers and uh, his crew are making some really, really neat things. There's um, one project he's working on, which he hasn't promoted yet. It's called DAGDB. And it's almost like, it's like if you took IPFS and you got rid of most of IPFS, you just kept the IPLD bit. And then you did like CoachDB type things. He used to work on that too. So uh, I, I, it's gonna be super, super interesting where that goes. Um, I, try, I tried to use some of that stuff for this demo, but I couldn't get it to run in observable. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but it's it's really, Expect to see stuff coming from that one. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll drop a link to that one. Mike Michael's one of my programming heroes. So. I, I don't think he, he wants to announce it yet, so this is top secret. <laughs> but it's open source and it's out there, so. So yeah, I'm totally, I totally want to just cross the streams of these projects and see what neat things can be built. Fun fact is a lot of the um, the JavaScript version of IPFS has got a lot of uh, code that's been you know forked or 
originally was written by Mathintosh. So there's, it's, there's a lot of commonality between the projects. So. Johan says, thanks for making those verbals, makes it much clearer for me how this all works. Thanks. All right. Well, let's let's thank uh, Shane for his awesome talk. Uh, thank you very much, Shane. Uh, coming out, coming next, we'll have a couple of um, workshops. Uh, the right one before uh, after this is holistic di digital authorship. Uh, then we'll have something about adding a st structured documentation to that. And finally, making a staff with that SDK. So um, I suggest you that uh, with that that you can take like a short break maybe grab some snack or something like that so you can join us for this final bit of that conference so thank you very much everyone